This is a Fox News alert. I'm Brett Baer in Washington. Moments ago, breaking news that no one saw coming today. We learned that President Trump has fired FBI Director James Comey. <laughs> Behold the MOAP. Mother of all presidents. That's right. President Trump did it again by firing James Comey, causing the media to dissolve in vapid clouds of hot steam. This is an extraordinary moment in American history. You bet it is, Wolf, and it's a grotesque abuse of power by the President of the United States. The timing now looks like it is connected to Russia, no matter what the President says, and this is where it's going to become a political hot potato. A little whiff of fascism tonight, I think it's fair to say. Absolutely. A little, wish, a, wh a little whiff of, I don't care about the law, I'm the boss. A whiff of fascism. <laughs> I believe that's my new cologne, whiff of fascism. I wear it at the club, with the club. <laughs> Yeah, but Donald Trump, the media are like birds freaking out over a sudden noise. What was that? A gunshot, a car horn, a squirrel. He fired somebody. Panic is so exhausting, but it's great for ratings. So for now, it's all about one thing. This whole idea that, especially on your network, you always want to talk about Russia, Russia, Russia. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Russia, Russia, Russia. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Russia, Russia, Russia. Hey, you guys. <laughs> That's how I feel every time. But it's true. Look at Rachel Maddow. It's all Russia, Russia, Russia. And if Russia is Rachel's Watergate, then Comey is her Archibald Cox. Archibald Cox. Archibald Cox was the special prosecutor who was brought in to investigate the Watergate case. Archibald Cox, Archibald Cox. And what Nixon did is he came for Archibald Cox. Archibald Cox, still Archibald Cox. And Archibald Cox looked the president in the eye and would not do that. Fire Archibald Cox. Fire Archibald Cox. Fire Archibald Cox. Archibald Cox? Yeah, he did get fired. Let's just admit, Archibald is a great name. <laughs> No one's naming their kids Archibald anymore. I blame him. But the left are delirious to a point that even comedians become disoriented. Huge story that broke little just minutes ago, like less than 10 minutes ago. FBI Director James Comey has just been fired by Donald Trump. Wow. Huge, huge Donald Trump fans here tonight. I don't think he expected that response. But, but that's what happens. That's what happens when your assumptions and your audience don't match. Like when you think Benghazi's hilarious. Since last September, Fox News has been pursuing this story doggedly to uncover how the administration blew it, when they blew it, why they blew it, and how they will continue to have blown it. And most importantly, how is this car still burning? So. Forgive us if we don't share your outrage over Comey when you find tragedy coverage so damn giddy. But in Donald Trump's mind, firing Comey should have been welcomed. Comey was a walking math book, presenting problems for everyone. And Trump, by firing him, was the dog proudly presenting a freshly caught bird to his owners. <laughs> but now the owners are scolding him for bringing that mess inside the house. There's just no doubt, given the timing, that the reason that Comey was fired was because Donald Trump wants to cut off any investigation. The president's dismissal of FBI Director James Comey is so inappropriate that it's hard to know where to begin. I told the president, Mr. President, with all due respect, you were making a big mistake. If this were Hillary Clinton, uh, the Republicans would be trying to impeach her right now. Ah, uh, but it's not. So. <laughs> Easy joke. I'll take it. So, 
Donald Trump, he flipped the script. He made the people who had condemned Comey now defend him, making them look like raving loon bucket hypocrites, i.e. Democrats. Now, I get it. The firing was indeed shocking. It was necessary. But Trump's method was harsh. It's kind of the same way tycoons break up with their girlfriends. You know, the Daily Wire recalls how Mr. Trump told Marla Maples he was divorcing her. Get this. He first tipped off the New York Post. Then when the paper came out, he left a copy of it in front of her door. <laughs> and the, head, the headline said, Donald is divorcing Marla. I mean... It's harsh, but how is it not awesome? <laughs> Talk about a final edition. Anyway, I assume she saw it coming, as I assume Comey did too. When everyone says you're doing a bad job, don't be surprised when you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs>Let's welcome tonight's guest, shall we? She's so sharp, her head doubles as a letter opener. Host of the Hollywood Conservative on Red State Talk Radio, Amanda Head. His wit is so dry, I use it to soak up unsightly spills. Writer and comedian, David Angelo. She's always the first to think the worst. Co-host of the hot new show, the Fox News specialist, Catherine Timpf. And the Sahara is his sandbox. Actor, former bodyguard, plus size model, and my massive sidekick, Tyrus. All right. All right, Amanda, welcome to the show. First time on. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Hope you don't screw up. Um, I hope. <laughs> what do you make of, I mean, the, 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 obviously the media's going crazy over this. Maybe the rollout of the firing wasn't that great. What are your thoughts? Uh, the rollout wasn't great, but I, I kind of wish that Trump had gone a little more in the unconventional direction. Like, instead of leaving Comey in L.A. and firing him from afar, mm -hmm. I wish that he had allowed Comey to come back to D.C., mm -hmm. brought him into the Oval Office, right. given him an atomic wedgie, wow. and then seen him, like, try to feel his way out of the White House and be like, by the way, you're fired. See you later. Wow. That is pretty cool. You are applauding... An atomic wedgie? What kind of insane people are you? Apparently you weren't never given an atomic wedgie. It's not pleasant at all. It's actually my major in college. <laughs> really? Yes, yes. I'm very good at it. Nobody could give you, you an atomic wedgie. No, I, I, was a, I was definitely the giver. Wedgie yes. Yeah, you're the, yeah. Well, you, you wedgie were the wedgie specialist. There you go. So, um, David, uh, this, uh, there was this interesting tweet that Donald Trump did. I don't know. Did you hear about this? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. That's good. Glad we're prepared. <laughs> uh, James Comey better hope that there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking to the press. Everybody goes crazy over this again. I have a theory that Donald Trump is the least interested in the things that he says. It's like people care more about what he says than he does. What are your thoughts? Yeah, he's just like freestyling. He's like, <laughs> this, is, this is an interesting idea. There's, maybe uh, there's some traction here. Yes. <laughs> and then he puts it out and people are like, oh my God, the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what tweet? Yeah, what tweet? I've for already forgotten about it. He's moved on to other things. What's your take on the whole Comey firing? Is this as monumental, as big as people are? Playing? Well, everybody hated him. Yeah. So then it's like, and, and then people say the timing is weird, but like, when could you have t when could you have fired him? It is weird. When, is when could you have done it? Okay, so I like to think of this as let's say that you got into a big fight with your boyfriend, right? And you did something awful, right? And you were sure he was going to break up with you, but then he didn't. Mm -hmm. And then three months later, he breaks up with you and says it was because of that fight. Yes. You're going to think something else was going on. That's a good. Okay. That's a You're going to think something else was going on, especially if he was like kind of getting a little close with like someone named Jennifer and even though there was like no proof of them actually colluding yes you would still have your suspicions and you know probably hire a private investigator wait is this breaking news that Donald Trump is cheating yeah. no he, no listen, no but to piggyback it's, like, it's called an analogy yeah. <laughs> I got piggyback it. on her analogy yeah so the timing of it is is not and, and to disagree with Kat but her I'm gonna fix on her point that she made mm -hmm. but here's the here's the deal kids here's the real truth what he did during that time ago was a fireable offense. Yeah. And he got a pass. And both sides, we hated him for what he did. When he testified 
and your boss is watching you testify, mm -hmm. and you are basically saying you are sick to your stomach as the, at the results mm -hmm. of your actions that you think determine who our president is, you say that, and you're now taking him back to what you did back then, he's going to fire you. Yeah. So wait. You brought it back. Now, to your boyfriend, hold up, to your boyfriend point. Hold up. No, not yet. Let me finish. Yes. I, I studied for this. Up. No. <laughs> to your point, your boyfriend, you did something horrible. Three months later, it showed up on your Facebook memories, and it popped back up, and you're like, oh, that was so funny. You cried so hard back then. And he goes, right. You know what? I'm out. I have a because solution. It came back. David, it to my back. problem or to the you have too many problem. problems. Too many problems. <laughs> if you have, give a special prosecutor on Trump. Right. And one on Hillary. Yeah, there you go. Everyone's happy. Even, yeah, even See who up. gets to the finish line. Exactly. I feel like the tweeting in general needs to stop, though. I feel like he's still kind of in reality show mode. Mm -hmm. um, and. I enjoyed it at the beginning. It was funny and it was humorous and it was entertaining. But for, it's it's kind of like, you know, like if I go to Costco and I buy a six pound bag of Jolly Ranchers and I eat it all, it's fun and I like it, but it's really bad for me. Yeah. And I think it's just bad for the presidency. And I think that somebody's got to go in there and just take his phone and yeah. sort but it that's out. Three pounds is. of Jolly Ranchers? Mm. It can be done, Kat. Yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a hell of an evening with a Jolly that's Rancher, so. but I can't get into that here. <laughs> My time in Wyoming. You know, um, the one thing I, I'm tired of people going after Trump about this, like, threat that he threatened James Comey in this tweet. I don't believe it's a threat if you do it publicly on Twitter. I mean, it's not deceptive. Like, if you're going to threaten somebody, you're going to do it, you know, privately. It's not a dead fish on his uh, Exactly. Yeah. It's not a dead fish. Half the Internet publicly threatens me on a regular basis. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Some people Same. here at this floor do that. Yep. All right. That's wanna... not me. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go to a break, there's a brand new pharmaceutical product on the market. And lucky for you, it's tonight's sponsor. Are you struggling to live in modern times? Do you wish you could relate everything back to a single historical event that happened decades ago? Are you left to make sense of current events on your own? We're left to find other context, other analogies that make this make sense. Well, wait no longer. Make this make sense with Nixonia. Nixonia bonds with the neurons in your brain, allowing you to successfully connect everything to Watergate. Trump's seismic firing, sparking comparisons to Watergate. This is a lot worse than Watergate. The whole echo of Watergate is very strong here. The results are undeniable. So talk to your doctor today about taking Nixonia. Side effects may include constantly being distracted by fantasies and impeachment. Talk to impeach. All right, we got to move on. Coming up, President Trump has reached another milestone in his presidency. What could it be? Well, if I told you now, it wouldn't be a tease. <laughs> Are Trump's other triumphs taking a toll on tax reform? Or am I just all about alliteration? It's the topic of tonight's Trump's first 100 days plus 10. Or maybe it's 14. How's he doing? Let's find out. <laughs> Does anyone remember what we were talking about at the beginning of this week? Seriously, I don't. But it was health care and taxes. But so much happens at once in a Trump presidency from Comey to North Korea to Russia that the media hurricane is always a category five. So is all the chaos drowning out his plan to make America great again? I know a judge who was deliberating the same thing. Your agenda is not getting out because people are caught up on the the Comey issue and ridiculous I stuff. I agree. How do I you agree. get rid of Comey? I, I think who the, in yeah. your press office says one thing, the vice president says another thing. How do we resolve? Well, that's an that? interesting situation. I actually said today, let's not ever do any more press briefings. You know, they're getting tremendous ratings, and the especially the fake media, they're they're going crazy. I think we were the first to run excerpts from this interview. I'm very excited about it. Anyway, uh, anything can change this whole thing, uh, Kat. Mm -hmm. How do you see the first, what, the first 110 days going? Oh, boy. <laughs> I think that we're going to continue talking about Comey for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And if Trump doesn't like that, then maybe he shouldn't tweet about Comey.
Yes. Yeah, that's should let it go. Move be. on. He, he should try to let it go. But the American people aren't going to let it go. He should say, investigate me more. Right. But keep investigating. I love it when you investigate me. I love it. It's this thing I read about called reverse psychology, Greg. Mm. And if you do that, then people might think, oh, he might not have anything to hide. I don't think that did well for Gary Hart, if I remember. Mm. I, think Gary Hart, I think Gary Hart said, follow me, and they did. Or was that John Edwards? Yes. I think it was John Edwards. I don't know. It was Either way, it was a philandering left winger. David. Uh, what are your thoughts on the future? What the future holds? It's going to be more Russia. Yes. Which is like, what's going on with Russia? Yeah. <laughs> is it this Jane, this Flynn? Is yes. Michael, we have a Michael Flynn phone call after the election. Yeah. Is the whole thing? Yeah, that's it. So you got to come at me with something stronger. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't keep saying, like, there's no evidence. Because when Trump says... We need to investigate voter fraud. They say, there's no voter fraud. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> when he says, we need to investigate Obama surveillance on right. Republican. They're like, get out. There's no evidence. Get out of here. <laughs> and then they're like, we need to investigate the Trump ties to Russia. Now, there's no evidence, but we're going to find something. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to stay up all night. Yes. We're going to get tons of agents and all the reporters, and they're going to crowdsource. It was like when they, were, when they found Sarah Palin's emails. They crowdsourced. See, I that. like to just not predict, so then that way I can't be wrong, and I can be like, fewer wrong to everyone else. <laughs> yes. I, I will say this about Trump, though. It started out people comparing him to Hitler. Yeah. And now you get Nixon, so in some ways he's winning people over. <laughs> <laughs> I think he. I think there's a rare gift here. He introduces a new level of chaos, and so some stuff is getting done. Like you have the, you know, the raids that are going on, the deregulation, the pipeline, but it's all in this cloud of dust. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot going on that's in the mainstream media. But meanwhile, you have things happening under the radar. Like two days ago, he signed one of the most important executive orders. Nobody covered it regarding election fraud and right. voting fraud. Nobody really heard about it, but there's all of this other stuff that's milling underneath. But I think that we as conservatives, we have a little bit of uh, amnesia when it comes to the left, because every time something like this happens, they have a complete freak out, and we're like, oh, they've really lost it this time. They've lost their complete, their collective, you know what? Yeah. And But we forget that that's what they did the last time, and the time before that, and the time before that. And this is what, this is what the Democrat Party has devolved into. It's just a dumpster fire. But conspiracy theories can be fun. Yeah. Uh, Tyrus? Can, can, can I get one point on Russia? Yes. Yeah. You got this little guy, Adam Schiff. Right. You know, he yeah. runs around. He's on TV all the time. Yeah. And a while back, he was like, we have more than circumstantial evidence mm -hmm. that he, there's ties to Russia. It's like, Adam, if that happens to be classified, we all want to know that. Yeah, yeah. That's not something that the public needs to know if the president is a spy. Yes. Don't keep that in a... Yes. We'll get so to tell it. us. But he's not telling us because he doesn't have anything. That's true. Although he is adorable. He is like the yeah. sheriff from Toy Story. <laughs> you know, Cyrus, I want you to just say what's on your mind right now about this because you're staring at me in a frightening way. I, I wish that that could be my own feeling. Yeah, there you go. It, no, you're right. 100. percent I'm thinking about doing bad stuff to you. Um, the uh, I wish some of his tweets you just start quoting movies. Like, you yeah. know, like my lawyer is the best lawyer. You know, you're gonna be doing the news from Alaska. That'd be great. Give him some Scarface stuff. Give him some stuff to really be scared about. Yeah. But, or dashboard confessional well, the point lyrics. Is that what would help me as a guy who watches a lot of news now because it's kind of a job. Yeah. Um, if instead of we had dun dun breaking news, we had dun dun breaking opinions, mm -hmm. and then I'd be like, oh, it's an opinion, it's not facts based, it's what they're feeling, and then there'd be a little show that's probably on for about 15 minutes. It goes, <laughs> and the news, <laughs> and it would just be an old guy with glasses who would tell us what's actually real and going on in the world today. Won't be exciting, won't be fun, but then we'd have breaking opinions because the American community as a whole is confused by all these opinions. They don't have any facts by it. Mm -hmm. If Trust me, I would think if he was a, and like I said, I don't know the whole deal with the, every time I see it, I'm like, oh great, here comes something, eh, you don't have anything. So at some point, I think Donald's right to be frustrated by the investigation because it is holding up so many things and costing so much money to the American people, all this investigation stuff. Mm -hmm. With We've had what, three committees? Yeah. Now they want a special prosecutor, and then they're going to want a special, special secret prosecutor, and then they're going to put him on double secret probation. I mean, there's... <laughs> All that stuff costs money. Yeah. So either you got some or you don't, man. Which exactly. one? Exactly. Like, you know. <laughs> Excellent point to end on, Mr. Tyrus.
and whatever mean things you were thinking of doing to me, I would probably enjoy. <laughs> Coming up, airlines and fist fights. It's the story that won't go away, but why would you want it to? <laughs> It's now as regular as your bowels after a bowl of beans. <laughs> another week, another batch of videos of airline passengers slugging the crap out of each other. I know this because of all the clever puns made by our friends in the media. Reminders of the now unfriendly skies. Well, to the unfriendly skies. Over the unfriendly skies. The skies continue to be unfriendly. And look at the incredibly Unfriendly skies. <laughs> One man on a Southwest flight attacked another guy while pulling into a gate at a California airport. He was arrested for misdemeanor battery. At the Fort Lauderdale airport, you probably saw this rumble 13 times already between angry spirits. I like the name of that, angry spirit airline passengers. After a pilot strike forced cancellations of hundreds of flights. And last week, two men came to blows. To on a flight from Tokyo to LA. How do you come to blows? Anyway, when security boarded when security boarded the plane, one of the guys actually yelled, You think I'm crazy? What about the government? Mm. Good question, because the government thinks he's crazy too. All right. So that's three stories. And my rule is if it happens three times, it has to be an epidemic. I learned that in media training. But you know what else I learned? There may be an untapped market for this content. Are you ready to take a non-stop flight to an earth? <laughs> Do you like seeing shoving, punching, scratching, biting, and hair pulling? Oh, this guy's crazy! Then you need Fight Flights Volume 4. It's the ultimate mixtape of all your favorite mile-high rumbles. See all the battles that were too off for life. All your favorite frequent fighters are here, including Guy Who Hogs the Armorist, Lady Who Tries to Get Off the Plane Before Everyone Else, Confused Ambien Man, and the tag team duo of Are You In Cover? So fasten your seatbelts because the only connections you'll see on this tape are to the face. Order now and we'll throw in the bonus video, The Best of Screaming Toddlers. It's Fight Flight, Volume 4. Order now. Oh, uh, yeah. The only connections you'll see are to the face. That is classic writing. Tyrus, all right. I have a, th what? Why is it whenever there's fighting, people <laughs> acting a fool, I'm always the lead because, go? Because you know why? I've never asked anything first. You know how, many, how hard it is to have a good answer when three specialists go before me? That's a different but, show. No. I'm talking, yeah, whatever. I'm not very special. Yes, you are. But sure, go ahead, fighting, ask me. Yeah, because nobody messes on a plane. You can do whatever you want. No, I don't. I have to deal with the same mean old, never been married stewardess as everybody else. <laughs> oh. Not all. They're wonderful people. She got into business to find a husband. 25 years later, still looking. Oh, Iris. Yeah, you. you just burned. Yeah, you, the one last, this morning, yeah. Uh, all woke right. me up over some damn orange juice. Just I said ginger ale. too close to home for some of us, Tyrus. No, but the, here's a, <laughs> Wait, before you go any further, Tyrus was only talking about one flight attendant, okay? So direct the mail to him. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what I love? Greg always has my back. The point is, like, first of all, Spirit Airline, if you're taking Spirit, take a bus, yo. I mean, come on, damn. <laughs> I mean, their pilots were on strike, you think? They charge you $4 for sample water? You want, ladies, you want to bring your purse? That's $75? Yeah. <laughs> Carry-on bag? Ooh, 150 And if you want to put it underneath the plane, that's another, I mean, damn. Yeah. I mean, take a bus. And yeah. the fact that you don't have the, 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 the human that's deduction skills to be like, my flight's canceled. Hmm, much like, I'll attack the person who can't get me a new flight. Yeah. I, you know, at Spirit, I think they put the suitcases on top of the plane. They just strap it with rope. Uh, Kat, um, isn't this story about ca camera phones, really? Like, this probably was happening before, but now we're just capturing it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm always confused when I see this because I've never reacted this way at an airport. No, but because I'm always on Xanax when I'm at the airport, <laughs> which everybody really should be, right? That's yeah. what they're for. It's unimaginable to me to not be have a little little little, little plain Xanny. Yes. <laughs> but you know, I don't. Spirit Airlines is very frustrating. Everyone's always like. Everyone's coughing on all airplanes, but it seems more like SARS virusy on a spirits flight really? than anything else. There's nobody who's not eating McDonald's and like coughing it out. And <laughs> I think like, this is a and everyone's dying. So I understand, but I understand being miserable. I don't understand where you go from I'm miserable to I'm miserable. I'm gonna punch that guy. Yeah, uh, this is becoming a classist argument against Spirit Airlines. You're, you're, you're comparing it to like a gray. No, you're 100 right. Classes they are classless. They classes are classless. Hated, Greg. Actually, yeah. no one likes actually, it. Spirit doesn't have classes. <laughs> They board, and, uh, you get priority boarding if you're wearing shoes. Yeah. <laughs> no shoes, no, no shirt, first. back of the plane. Yeah. Yeah. I actually took a late spirit flight in here last night. Yeah, it was the, it was the pink eye. You know, you just. <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. You, you, go, you, the, the, you have to add the fee of your doctor's visit after you get off that plane every time. Oh, my Another God. You're fee. killing this yeah. poor airline. Boom. No, they've been killing us. Like, yeah. I threw them once. I, just once. Oh, I got to say. I love Delta. <laughs> Delta. Yeah, no, yeah. actually, I'm Delta. I, I'm a big Delta fan. Amanda, uh, I, 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 anything that's non-spirit related? <laughs> uh, well, the Southwest one. We're not talking about the Southwest yeah, yeah. one. Um, I, I'm kind of okay with them brawling because, you know, this is the whole, like, you know, you, you board and then you pick your seat. Yeah. Which can be a good thing if you're at the beginning. Right, but terrible. Not a good thing if you're not at the beginning, if you're towards the end. But if two people brawl mm -hmm. and they get ejected, then there's two more seats. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so do you do the thing where you walk up behind Windows somebody? Seat is mine. Yeah. You walk up behind somebody and, and you hit them in the shoulder so they think it's somebody else. And then you start the fight. You know what? I want to, my point to this is this is proof of how mundane and successful air travel is. 70 years ago, people would be in awe of this technology, which is why they all dressed up. This was a big deal getting on a plane, even if you were going to die, but they got dressed up. Now people show up in sweats and thongs because they're bored by it. And they leave streets. Sweats everywhere. and thongs. Sweats and thongs should be a band name. Sweats and thongs. Up next, did Betsy DeVos get booed during her college commencement address? If you said yes, realize that no one can hear you. They turned their backs on Donald's flack. This week, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos gave the commencement address at Bethune-Cookman University, an historically black school. A Republican on a college campus? Wonder how this is going to go. The Honorable Betsy DeVos. I now ask the Honorable... I... Now, maybe they're not booing. Maybe they noticed Lou Dobbs in the audience. <laughs> he gets around. But maybe it'll get better when DeVos takes the stage. Thank you so very, very much for this great honor and privilege. I am honored to become a wildcat. Anyway, it didn't get better. Maybe if she talks about the options one has when meeting someone new. Anytime we meet someone new, we have two options. We can focus on differences that might divide us, or we can choose to listen, to be receptive, and to learn from others' experiences and perspectives. Well, that's the definition of irony. <laughs> well, what's not predictable in all of this is Bethune-Cookman University. It did two brave things. One, the school invited DeVos in the first place, even though critics believe the administration is a threat to the school's federal funding. And two, they didn't disinvite her, even after a petition went around to keep her out. And what about Pre President Edison Jackson, the man who tried to bring order to the graduation? If this behavior continues, your degrees will be mailed to you. Choose which way you want to go. The Florida NAACP is calling on him to resign. Meanwhile, I'm calling him to say 
Hell no! You resign. Yeah, all right. I understand, Tyrus, that... Why did I know you were going to... I could have set my watch to that. <laughs> Go right ahead. You don't wear a watch, by the way. No. Um, risk. Couldn't they? You couldn't. The students have uh, registered a better protest in total silence. Do you think this was the right thing to do, given the disagreements they may have? There's, there's two things here that were the right things. The fact that, and I don't agree with much of what you know she's about, but she had a right to speak. Right. And she was invited to speak at that and when you have different ideas and different things you need to be in the same room yep. now the students had every right to boo mm -hmm. and they had every right to turn their back they didn't have a right to throw things they didn't have a right to attack her they didn't have a right to threaten things like that and they didn't do those things You're right and then the school which might he sound like every principal and college dean i ever had who said who said if you're going to act like this i'm going to mail you and most of like damn because i got to go get my degree and it's a, what he did was okay yeah everybody was in the right in that situation and she handled it like with with great respect and dignity yeah so this is a perfect example of when a bad situation is done right on both sides mm. and maybe if you looked and everyone's focusing on the, the kids that turned their back and they were Dr. setting their Jackson. ways you're Before missing the kids that sat back down and paid attention halfway through her speech so maybe she didn't reach all of them but she did open a couple eyes like you know what the things i've heard about her she sounds like a nice intelligent woman and maybe we could have a dialogue oh. and maybe she is against the college and the funding but now they have a dialogue because they invite her and see this is what you do you set things up yeah and yeah. i have no problem with any of this what do you think cat yeah i would applaud i would applaud that i don't normally applaud tyrus what do i think i think that what happened to her when she was talking is exactly how i feel every time i go on twitter 100% absolutely these days. It's very sad, but you do it anyways. She, they made her look a little more sympathetic, mm -hmm. I think, by booing her. She was trying so hard to talk, and they were booing her, and they were turning their backs. Uh, it, it obviously was rude, but they have a right to be rude. It was a peaceful protest. But, you know, she handled it great. She just kept talking. Maybe she was doing some sort of meditation technique where yeah. she was setting herself in her mind, and the booing wasn't there. Yes. That's kind of how she acted. I would, I, Amanda, I don't think, you know, I know myself pretty well i'm old enough not to say i don't want to put myself through this it's like why would i take that risk so part of me is that she probably knew this was coming but still went i kind of admire that yeah i admire it and it's not like a, you know for instance last year i did a salon magazine panel yeah and i'm it, sorry yeah <laughs> it was three on one yeah i knew that i was going to be outnumbered i but i but i still went into it thinking this could maybe be constructive yeah it wasn't. No. At all. Um, but this is the kind of thing, since it is a one-way one, one -way dialogue, she is speaking to them. Maybe there's, like, some little bit of information in there that they can pick up on. I just keep thinking the way my parents would have, have treated me or acted if I had done this as a college yeah. senior, and it would have involved a yardstick. Mm -hmm. And it would not have been legal for the administration of this school to do that to the kids. Yeah. But it, it's just, you know, and, and yeah, it's free speech, but it's not respectful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that, you know, she does deserve a, a level of respect, even if you don't agree with her. Right. But your parents hit you with the yardstick when you were in college? <laughs> Multiple times. Well, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, David, last word to you. Thoughts? Well, I mean, I didn't even have a commencement speaker. You know, I went to an online university. <laughs> yeah. Our school rival was S. Jeeves. <laughs> you know, that, that's a great joke. If only half of America could remember who Ask Jeeves is. Yeah, would my space work better? I'm sorry. My, I know. You're still working it out? Still working out? You know what kills me, though? Most, I, I have to make this point. Republicans during campaign seasons are often criticized for not going to certain arenas. Like I think Mitt Romney got some beef for you, know, like not speaking before certain at schools. But then when they do, if this happens, it's like then you kind of go, oh, now I know why they don't want to go. But, you know, I don't know. I'm ambivalent. <laughs> Me too. Yes. I liked being booed in wrestling. I liked more being cheered. I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, well, you, you like being a villain. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That settled nothing. When we come back, an in-depth look at who could oppose Donald Trump in 2020. And by in-depth, I mean a very shallow look, a few inches at best. Stay with us.
They're in overdrive to beat 45. The Hill, the newspaper, not the area of raised land, <laughs> has come up with 43 candidates who might run against President Trump in 2020. Familiar faces will likely include Senators Elizabeth Warren and Kirsten Gillibrand, 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 as well as Governor Andrew Cuomo. Non-traditional candidates from the business and entertainment industries include the Marks, at Zuckerberg and Cuban. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a registered Republican. And Pennywise the Clown. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, Trump supporter Antonio Sabato Jr. is running for Congress, which means he could be ready for a presidential run in 2024, if we're lucky. Let's take a look at some of his qualifications. <laughs> Clearly, he can build a wall of abs. Uh, really handy with that hammer, I bet. All right. David, who would you like out of that or anybody you thinking about? I mean, The Rock at this point, I'll hear what he has to say. It's like, <laughs> what's going on? Plus, if it's The Rock, then Tyrus can take over all his movie roles. There you go. That's true. No, because The Rock only plays The Rock in the movie roles, and I'd be like... But it's the same character. Right, yeah. No, you know I'm going back to Greg. This is crazy. <laughs> but that's Tyrus playing Tyrus. That's yeah. even better. Maybe. Let's try to stick to the topics, Amanda. How dare you? What's your... What's your uh... I would actually like to see some people like um, Spencer Pratt, Carrot Top, <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Ah, I think they'd I think, be good. I think he just got out of jail. David, <laughs> did you give a, did you give a suggestion? Yeah, but you know what? I'll throw in Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think it would be great to... Ha I know he's not eligible, but why? We, he's an American. Come on. Yeah, he was a great governor. Also, and like, you know, Elizabeth. No, I lived in California. Mm. So, no, I, I remember it well. It wasn't pleasant. What about you, Kat? Well, I'm a libertarian, so I just hate whoever it is and end up voting for myself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> At the end. Doesn't matter. Yo, he's still on the fence. You know what it is? I'm going to say, what about me? Right? It should be you. Yes, Wait a because minute. I don't get asked because there's, there's no weightlifting or fighting in this segment. <laughs> I know, I, I overlooked you, I'm sorry, Tyrus. It's, it's, it's hard wow. to do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What's, what's your choice? Uh, I Honestly, I think The Rock is a, is a serious contender just because I think eventually America, the way we're going right now, your social media is going to matter whether you're yeah. getting votes and stuff. And he's he, he has a huge following, and he's starting to do little things. He's starting to build rapport with the military. He's doing all their mm -hmm. shows and benefits. He just did the soundtrack thing where he was going over great American political moments where you hear his voice and telling you what songs are great. So he definitely has a plan. And yeah. And this is what our country's come to. He was it's, great. It's going to be game. Jeb Bush. <laughs> but politicians are out. That's what, when I said, what about me? I was saying that because in every pundit's head, they're, they're, that's the refrain because Trump did it. Why can't I? I heard it from a few. He broke the ceiling. He broke the ceiling. A historical pop culture ceiling. Uh, not Ronald Reagan, because remember, he was in office for a long time. But but uh, he's just, he was the first guy to go from pop culture to politics in one leap. I'll leave you with that thought. Final thoughts next. If you leave now, you'll miss the pie eating contest. <laughs> If you'll be in New York City and would like free tickets to be part of our studio audience, email greatticks at foxnews.com. I'll see you uh, Monday on the 5 at our new time, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're running out of time, so. What you've wanted to say all show, but haven't had the chance to say, so here's your chance to say it right now. All right, we got a minute, Amanda. Uh, I have a new show coming up Monday through Friday. Check my social media to see information. Also, if you're out in Times Square and if you guess any local New Yorkers, there's a nice pretty billboard for Red State Talk Radio, which is my network, and you'll see a familiar face on it. There you go. All right, David. Well, you know, with all that's going on in the world today, I think it's important that, you know, if Delta's watching, that I get uh, Diamond Medallion. Come on. I love Delta. Yeah. Diamond Medallion. Guys. I'm just going to do it, and this is mean, but I don't care. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, except for mine. <laughs> except for mine. Cat. Cat. 
Wow, you're using your platform for evil, Tyrus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, orange juice is so inferior to tomato juice. I don't understand why more people don't realize that. I think, you know what? You change minds one at a time. Yep. All right. Amanda Head, David Angelo, Cat Tim, Tyrus, Studio